For the last decades, GDP growth figures have been the key criterion for measuring and driving our policy making. But we have moved and we know that we can no longer be naively optimistic about what growth can really provide. Growth can blind us, as we saw with the financial and economic crisis. Growth can stagnate as we see with the discussion about the secular stagnation. And growth can generate inequality, which in itself is not good, but which can also undermine growth. So we see a growing international debate about the relationship between growth and inequality and the meaning of progress. Of course, we all know that some income dispersion is a basic characteristic of, of market economies. It provides incentives to invest in human capital, in new ideas, products, as well as to undertake some risky ventures being an entrepreneur. Uh, larger income inequality uh, undermines the foundations of market economies and lower economic growth. Our estimate is that the rise in income inequality between 1985 and 2005 may have knocked 4.7 point, percentage points off the cumulative GDP growth of OECD countries. And this is where we came up with this idea of inclusive growth, inclusive growth in a sense of multidimensional approach to the quality of growth, okay? So income, income inequalities, the environment, education, health, and those other dimensions that matter uh, for people's life. How can you design policies that will achieve those objectives, uh, perhaps not all at the same time, but at least forces you to think when you design those policies about those trade-offs and those potential win-win solutions that will allow you to achieve both economic growth but also address those other dimensions of life that matter uh, to people. Forty years ago, 50 years ago, there was a strong belief in trickle-down economics. If the economy grew, every sector would grow. The market would take care of it. And we now know that that's not true. It's not automatic. Mm. And that, you know, the debate about why, but it's very clear that in the United States, for instance, the, the top 10% have done quite well, but there's been basically stagnation for the bottom 90%. Mm. So it's an important debate about why that is, what are the characteristics of the economy, but that's, so trickle-down economics doesn't work. I think we have much more pressing problems. We have the problem of an aging society that is not really uh, aware of the fact that uh, we have been, had a lot of luck during the, uh, during the crisis. Our product portfolio, if you like, was not really challenged. German cars have been in demand after the crisis as well, after it's subsided. But whether the next crisis will be, won't be one where uh, German products are not really very much uh, under coming under pressure. And we have to restructure. The Spanish have to, had to restructure because their uh, housing sector is something that is not really in, in a prosperous state any longer. What if the German manufacturing and car sector comes under pressure? We are not really prepared for that. We are not very well prepared for adapting to uh, the new digital age. So these are the challenges that you should address. And sometimes to have more, uh, let's say, rely more on market mechanisms might not be a bad issue yeah, for yeah. Germany. There used to be thought that there was a trade-off. You could only get more equality by giving up on growth. Mm. And now we see growth and equality, you say, as complement. So inclusive growth which I would say is the only real growth, is actually likely to be better. In the case of, you know, IMF study, they've shown that it's more sustained. And in the case of both the OECD and the IMF studies, that they are, it's likely to be stronger.
This is the basic idea of the social market economy as we know it in Germany, to have uh, a dual approach where we let the market work on the one hand with uh, fighting power uh, cartels uh, and, and the concentration of power by uh, dismantling cartels, and on the, th and on the other side providing a tax and transfer system that is uh, at the same time when the product is generated, is distributing it, redistributing it. This is basically the idea. It has been an advantage to Germany to have the social market economy mm -hmm. that uh, has brought down the, the inequality. But one of the striking things about Germany is that it's pre-market, I mean, it's pre-redistribution, it's market inequality mm -hmm. is among the highest of any of the advanced countries. I think one of the big challenges for our society, for our aging society, for our society in the digital age with all these short-term jobs with low, uh, um, low social relations between employers and uh, long-term relations or le less long-term relations between employers and workers, one of the issues will be to uh, fight the loneliness of many people. We have a huge societal challenge ahead of us that has nothing to do really with prosperity in terms of, of material life, but in terms of being embedded in a, uh, yeah, a social structure that is really fulfilling. Each country is going to feel its own inequalities more strongly. And there are reasons for that, because we live in nation states. We still, that is the basic political unit. And particularly inequalities of wealth get translated into political inequalities. <laughs> The concept of inclusive growth is gaining momentum. I think that uh, even for a country with a rich tradition of social market economy as Germany, the concept of inclusive growth, that is growth which goes farther than just GDP, but it also includes um, participation, not only in the economy, but also uh, mobility uh, in the labor market, education, access to health, etc. This concept of inclusive growth is extremely important. I also uh, was happy to get a lot of comments and input on the work that we do uh, in our project called Inclusive Growth for Germany. So what would, could be a growth path for Germany where not only G GDP can have a solid growth path, but also where we take into account the results of the economy for the environment, the results of economic growth for people, the inclusion of human capital in the thinking of, uh, of growth. So the inclusive growth concept was the right one. It was right to start it a few years ago, but we got a lot of good comments from external people, and that adds to the quality of our work. <laughs>